Today I am going to be taste testing fall inspired TikTok recipes to see if they're actually good or not. Part of my strategy was to pick viral recipes that are really easy to make so you don't actually have to be a good chef but also when you make it you could possibly show up and look like you're impressive to people even when you're not impressive. Not speaking from experience or anything. So I've pulled together quite the collection. I've got desserts, appetizers, main dishes, lots of delicious hopefully options. A portion of this video will be sponsored by Oatly. This is my second Oatly cold brew of the day. Don't judge me. They actually asked me to swap in Oatly with one of these recipes. They told me if it failed to tell you, so stick around, subscribe for the tea. I'm gonna start this with the recipe that I'm dreading the most. It is a viral TikTok recipe that really disturbed me. It's a water pie. Yes, you heard me correctly. A pie that is mostly made of water. Yes, this is one of the strangest recipes ever. So you're gonna start with a pie crust and then you're gonna add the main ingredient, one and a half cups of water. Then you're gonna mix in a quarter cup of flour and a cup of sugar. You're gonna mix that really well. Then you're going to lightly sprinkle that mix in. And this goes on for a long time, like a very long time. And then you're gonna add in a couple of teaspoons of vanilla extract, but you're not gonna mix it. You're just gonna sprinkle it wherever it feels right. Then you're gonna add five tablespoons of butter and that is it. Be careful, you're gonna transfer it to your oven at 400 degrees, bake it for 30 minutes. Then again at three 75 degrees for 25 minutes. And here she is folks, the pie of our nightmares. The thing that was difficult about this was getting it to not look like water. It took me a long time to cook it and it's still a little gelatinous. Ugh. Pies are supposed to be delicious, not weird. It took me a long time to even try a shepherd's pie because I was like, oh no, are there shepherds in there? I was a child, that wasn't an adult thought. It's not, I promise. It's like jello consistency. Are you guys seeing this? I will say it smells really good. And is it healthy for me? I can't decide. It's kind of good. It's kind of good. It actually tastes like pecan pie or pecan or pecan, whatever you say, without the pecans. Like if you really could throw some pecans in here, I don't know if I would know the difference. I wish it had a little more texture to it. Maybe I just should have cooked it a little bit longer. Maybe my oven is just subpar. Maybe my cooking skills are just subpar. I'm so relieved. Really good. It's really good. I don't know if it's really good or if it's just really so much better than I thought it would be. Next up is this pumpkin dump cake that got over 7 million views on TikTok. You're gonna mix one can of pumpkin, one 12 ounce can of evaporated milk, four eggs and a cup of sugar, and a dash of pumpkin spice, and a half teaspoon of salt. And you're gonna mix all of that up really well, and then you're gonna pour that into a greased pan. Then you're gonna take one bag of yellow cake mix, and you're going to gently sprinkle that on and layer that on. Again, don't mix it. You're just gonna pat it down into your little mixture. And then you're gonna top it with pecans. And my tip here is to be very, generous with your pecan emotions here. Have a full pecan breakdown. I did forget to pour another stick of melted butter on top of this concoction, which I do think would have made it next level. I did have to mix it once, once it was done, because it looked like the cake mix was still a little too cake mixy for me, but it's that simple. And here we have our pumpkin crumb cake. The smells that are coming from this, Beth and Body Works are quaking. It just smells incredible. This was recommended to eat this with like ice cream or whipped cream. Before I try it with that, I wanna taste it in its natural state. It looks like you took a pumpkin bread and just mushed it up. Oh my gosh, I have to tell someone, this is the best thing I think I've ever eaten. That TikToker needs a million followers times seven. This, mm. guys, I don't know about you, I don't really like pumpkin pie, it kind of is boring to me. This, this is like pumpkin pie on steroids. This is the most fluffy, chewy, crunchy, soft, buttery, fantastic pumpkin dessert I think I've ever had. It's everything you, that pumpkin pie should be. Please take this to your holiday parties as a dessert. Tell them it's a secret recipe. They will eat it and think that you're freaking Martha Stewart. <laughs> People will cry, children will weep. It almost has the consistency of a cheesecake and a pumpkin cake. It's creamy, but it's fl I just I would put ice cream with it, but I just don't even know if that's worth it. Cornbread is one of my favorite dishes at Thanksgiving, and Oatly challenged me to take on the Will It Swap Challenge so that I could swap in Oatly for what I would traditionally use in a classic corn 
cornbread recipe. And they told me if it doesn't taste good, tell the people. Like we want to have an honest conversation to see if it is a product that you can use in a lot of different ways. And I'm going to compare the viral cornbread recipe with the dairy. And then I'm going to try the Oatly version. If you've never heard of Oatly before, it was really one of the first dairy alternatives that kind of took the world by storm because it's one of the only dairy alternatives that I think actually tastes really good. So we're doing this the Oatly way. Let's go. So I'm making this recipe twice with the swap, of course. The TikToker just used a prepackaged box of cornbread mix and you're going to work to get all the lumps out. And you're gonna add one egg, three tablespoons of melted butter and two tablespoons of sugar and a quarter cup of Oatly. And I'm gonna mix that all up until everything is incorporated. Next, you're going to add in some canned corn. You can also use sweet canned corn if you have it. Then you're gonna add this to a greased pan and bake at 350 degrees for about 30 to 45 minutes. Once it's done, you're gonna to top with honey. All right, here are my two cornbreads. They both look pretty identical. I do have to say it did take me about five to 10 minutes longer in the oven for the Oatly version of this recipe. It just took a little bit longer to cook. Other than that, they both look and smell delicious. And at first slice, you can Oh my gosh, you have to be talented to do food videos. This side is the Oatly version. This side is the normal dairy version. And this one is a little bit more solidified. This one kind, kind of fell apart and crumbled. But first is the regular recipe. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. The honey really is kind of the best part. The texture's good, the temperature's good, the flavor's good. Everything about this is an A+. How will it compare to Oatly? Let's see. Do a little drizzle. This is gonna be the true test. Let me get like a, a bite with all the different parts. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. <laughs> Wait a minute. What's interesting about this is it tastes lighter. Like it tastes f not fluffier, but it, it doesn't taste as dense as the regular recipe. I'm gonna have one more bite just to make sure that I didn't just make that up <laughs> in my head. Hmm, that's wild. Do I like the Oatly one more? If you would have put this in front of me Thanksgiving day, I would not know that you put Oatly in here versus dairy. I would have absolutely no idea. I think I actually prefer the Oatly because it doesn't feel as heavy somehow. I'm really surprised. I thought it would be maybe too sweet or have too much of like a signature oat flavor that might ruin the cornbread recipe of it all. Somehow it makes it better. Changing the world, one oat drink substitution into a delicious holiday recipe at a Type. <laughs> Put Oatly to the test, share it on social media, hashtag will it swap. Also click the link in the description below to see more people taking on the Oatly challenge, get some recipe ideas, see what works, see what doesn't work. Thanks Oatly. Next is a cinnamon roll apple pie of my dreams, or at least I hope that it is. I've done a lot of cinnamon roll recipes on this channel. I don't think I've ever had something that involved a cinnamon roll that didn't really change my world and make me want to start a cinnamon roll stand on the corner in Los Angeles. So we're gonna go with our classic package of cinnamon rolls that you get from the grocery store and you're gonna set aside the icing that comes with it for later. Then you're gonna take your kitchen scissors and cut your cinnamon rolls into quarters. And in your baking dish, you're going to pour in a stick of melted butter and arrange your cinnamon roll pieces neatly in the pan. Next, you're gonna grab some canned apple pie filling or you can make it fresh if you're good like that and cut it up into small pieces in the can and spread that filling all over your bed of cinnamon roll slices. Next, you're going to add in a dash of nutmeg, a dash of cinnamon, and you're gonna bake this at three 375 for about 30 minutes. And here's what she looks like straight out of the oven. This, I will say, is probably the least attractive of all the cinnamon roll recipes that I've tried. I feel like it needs something else. This looks like you just stumbled upon this maybe in a parking lot in a sketchy part of town. <gasps> I forgot about the icing. I mean, does this visual make anybody else as happy as it makes me? Now we can fully immerse ourselves in this sensory overload experience. It's good, I would give it like um, a seven out of 10. I think it would be even better if you had made the apple filling fresh. This has, has so much potential. I also feel like it needs a crunch. Like I think you could do like a pecan, 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 whatever you say, kind of crumble on top or some sort of nut sensation. <laughs> Tell me what else you would put in here to try and maybe take it over the edge. I feel like it needs grounding. It needs to center itself. And now I'm sad I wasted all my cinnamon rolls with that apple pie filling. You know, maybe it just tastes too healthy. Maybe that's the problem. I'm like, 
Ew, it has health in it. Gross. Next up is this viral baked brie appetizer that you absolutely need on your table this holiday season. When I typically make my version of this, I make it with large pastry sheets, but all the grocery store had this time were these small ones, so I had to kind of makeshift this little pastry pocket before I finally assembled the messy masterpiece you're about to see. You're gonna get yourself some delicious brie, and then you're gonna cut up slices into the cheese, which is something I've never done before, so that all of your toppings, as they melt, that they can ooze into the cheese. Next, you're going to get your favorite jam, and you're gonna spread it all over the brie, go everywhere. This is one of the best parts of this recipe. And then you're gonna drizzle in a little bit of honey and sprinkle in some pecan pieces. Then you're gonna strategically, in my case, <laughs> wrap this up like a pig, a brie pig in a blanket, I should say. And you're gonna bake this at 350 degrees. Here's what it looks like fresh out of the oven. It actually didn't turn out too terribly. I wish I would have gotten the full size pastries, but it's in the past. In order to make this extra special, we're gonna drizzle it with honey. If you wanna get crazy, you can top it with more pecans, pecans, pecan, whatever you say. Yum. This is so great to put on like a, a table for people to snack on. There's just so much cheese cheesy, flaky goodness in there. I can't believe I lived most of my adult life without even knowing this existed. All right, so have a good bite here. Hot, hot, hot. Mmm. <gasps> this is so good. Just the right amount of savory, the perfect amount of sweet, that fluffy croissant vibe pastry on top with some nuts and a little bit of crunch. <laughs> Wow, oh my gosh. The key is buying really good quality brie because you really can taste the difference. And because this is so easy to make and takes almost no skill at all, and it is so mind-blowingly delicious, you have to try this. All right, next is the chicken pot pie recipe that I saw on TikTok. Chicken pot pie is one of those things that makes me feel like it's really hard to make, that only a mom can make it. Like, I feel like moms and grandmas are in the exclusive chicken pot pie category. But I'm never made a chicken pot pie, so I was like, this feels like the perfect time, especially because it had gone viral. You're gonna melt a stick of butter on a skillet, and you're gonna toss in about a half a cup of red onions and let those soften. And then you're gonna mix in about a third cup of flour and a dash of salt and pepper, and you're gonna mix that in slowly into the pan, making sure to incorporate it really well before adding more. Then you're gonna add in about a cup and three quarters of chicken broth and a half cup of your dairy of choice. And you're gonna stir that in until it thickens. Then you're going to add your chicken pot pie veggies that you choose. I did frozen corn and green beans. You're gonna incorporate those into the sauce really well. Next, you're going to put in some shredded chicken and you're gonna mix that all together and your filling is pretty much ready to go at this point. Now it's time to decorate. I picked up some of the pastries that I used in one of the earlier recipes and I pulled out some really cute holiday cookie cutters. You can literally use whatever you have on hand. I went for this leaf option just because it's fall and it just felt right for this video. Then you're gonna cut out the little shapes in your pastry and this is gonna go on top of your filling. Once you have your pile of leaves ready, then you are going to place those on top of your baking pan or souffle dish in my case and you're gonna pop that in the oven at 400 degrees for about 20 to 30 minutes. And here she is looking sort of cute. I mean, I feel like if I had had better cookie cutters, it could have looked cuter. But I actually made enough of this that Matt and I could eat it for the week. It's kind of like our weekly meal. So I hope it's good because we're going to be eating it for four to five days. It's good. It's good. It's a solid option. Not the best thing I've ever eaten. I do think if we had add more variety of vegetables in there, it probably would taste a little bit more elevated. It needs some carrots. It needs peas. Matt hates peas, so I can't put peas in it. I feel like the veggies can make or break this. I also think if you had fresh vegetables, it would probably taste even better too. For something quick and delicious for a family, I feel like this is pretty easy and tasty. It's a little sweet, which is odd. I don't know if I'd make it again. I think it gets extra credit points for being easy to make. I also kind of think this isn't gonna be good on day four. The texture is gonna be weird, so I definitely didn't think that through and I should have. Julina though, <sighs> the holidays are here and I couldn't be happier. I love sweater weather. Let me know in the comments if you typically swap Oatly into some of your recipes. Give us all the tips and tricks down below. Thanks again to Oatly for sponsoring. Don't forget, go down below, share your Will It Swap Oatly Swap. Swapstitute? Is that a good, I like, oh I like that. Don't forget to subscribe. Happy holidays.